seen a bike hit over 200 miles per hour down a public road lined with stone walls, telephone poles, and pub signs? It happens every year at the Isle of Man TT. Riders fly through villages, leap over crests, and dip into valleys like they're in a high-speed ballet choreographed by chaos itself. Now take a MotoGP bike and try doing the same. It won't just be a challenge, that machine would be completely out of its element. This isn't just about different bikes on different tracks. It's a deep, fascinating contrast in mechanical philosophy, riding styles, and the raw demands of two very different types of racing. If a MotoGP machine is the embodiment of controlled perfection, then a TT Superbike is the symbol of adaptability, chaos management, and brute resilience. Here's how and why their mechanical setups are so different, and why trying to swap them would be like throwing a F1 car into a rally stage. The suspension setup, track precision versus real-world violence. MotoGP bikes are built for tracks that resemble billiard tables, smooth, perfect surfaces that never surprise the rider. Because of that, the suspension on these bikes is stiff, with limited travel. Everything is designed to keep the chassis as stable as possible under high cornering loads and brutal braking zones. Now drop that same bike onto the Isle of Man TT course and things unravel in seconds. There are blind jumps, sudden dips like Bray Hill, and camber shifts that come out of nowhere. A MotoGP bike hitting the bottom of Bray Hill at full speed would likely bottom out, hard, and potentially crack its frame. That's why TT bikes run softer suspension with much more travel. They need to survive. The setup is designed not just for performance, but for survivability. When a bike flies over a crest and comes down hard, that suspension needs to compress deeply without kicking the rider into orbit. And it's not just about vertical movement. Side-to-side -side stability over rough roads is just as critical. Then there's the steering damper. Most MotoGP bikes use one, but it's relatively minimal. TT bikes, on the other hand, often use massive ones, because when the front wheel goes light over a jump at 180 miles per hour, the last thing anyone wants is a full-on tank slapper. The TT bike setup is about controlling chaos, not just maximizing corner speed. Gearing for purpose, sprint circuit versus endurance chaos. On a MotoGP circuit, gearing is a science of milliseconds. The goal, optimize for acceleration out of corners and for a few key straightaways. Six gears are enough, with ratios fine-tuned to perfection for each specific track. Top speeds might reach 350 kilometers per hour, but only in short bursts. It's more about repeatable bursts of performance than long sustained speed. Compare that to the Solby Strait at the Isle of Man. Here, a bike might hit over 200 miles per hour and stay pinned for well over 30 seconds. But then, just a few miles later, it'll have to dive into a first gear hairpin at Ramsey. That's a gearing nightmare. TT bikes need flexibility, not perfection. So gearing on TT machines is a compromise. Long final drives allow for those insane top speeds, but there still needs to be enough low-end punch for tight corners. This also impacts the chain setup. Because the suspension travels so much more on a TT bike, the chain must run looser to accommodate the swing arm's extended motion under compression. Tight chains can snap or bind during big jumps or landings. MotoGP bikes don't face those kinds of dynamic range. They stay within a narrow band of operation. Stability versus agility, geometry wars. One of the biggest philosophical differences between MotoGP and TT setups lies in the geometry, wheelbase, rake, and trail. In MotoGP, agility is king. Riders flick the bike into corners, change direction quickly, and rely on the machine's ability to respond instantly. That means a shorter wheelbase, sharper rake, and quicker trail. But the Isle of Man TT course doesn't reward twitchy handling. With stone walls inches away, the last thing a rider needs is a bike that reacts too fast. Stability wins. TT bikes are often set up with longer wheelbases, relaxed rake angles, and more stable trail values. These changes make the bike less responsive in tight corners, but much more composed at high speeds over variable terrain. It's like comparing a scalpel to a machete. One is precise and surgical, the other built to survive a jungle. At TT speeds, over undulating and unpredictable roads, that stability is the difference between a controlled brush with a stone wall and a catastrophic loss of control. Wind management and rider comfort. 
MotoGP riders don't sit still for long. A race might last 45 minutes, but during that time, they're constantly shifting positions, hanging off the bike, changing lean angles, and resetting in the straights. The tuck position is temporary, often used only on the longest straights. The TT, that's 20 minutes per lap, often with riders staying tucked for entire sectors. That makes wind management absolutely critical. That's why TT bikes often run taller windscreens. These provide just enough wind protection to reduce neck strain, allowing the rider to focus on the road ahead rather than battling wind resistance. It might seem like a small change, but over six laps, which is more than 200 miles, small comforts become performance multipliers. Fatigue management matters. At 180 miles per hour through village streets, tired eyes and a strained neck can cost more than just lap time. Track environment and error budget. A MotoGP track is a controlled ecosystem. Perfect tarmac, predictable corners, engineered runoff areas. It's an environment optimized for repeatable excellence. Riders learn every inch of it and mistakes are often recoverable. The TT? Not so much. There are bumps, drains, jumps, blind crests, and unpredictable wind. Riders deal with sunlight flickering through trees, shadows hiding surface imperfections, and temperature shifts that can change tire grip mid-sector. That means the bike setup needs to absorb uncertainty. In MotoGP, the bike does exactly what it's told, and only that. At the TT, the bike needs to be a partner, not a tool. It needs to interpret, flex, and sometimes even correct the rider's input. It's not about extracting 100% from the surface. It's about surviving 90% of madness and capitalizing on the 10% of smoothness. Rider psychology and machine relationship. In MotoGP, the rider is constantly pushing against the edge of tire grip and mechanical limits, but within a well-defined safety net. They can experiment, push, reset, in TT racing, the edge is less forgiving. One mistake, one misread, and there's no gravel trap to catch you, just a stone wall or a tree. That forces a completely different mindset. TT riders must build trust with their machine and the route. Every bump is memorized. Every vibration means something. Over years, riders develop a sixth sense of when to push and when to hold back. So the mechanical setup reflects that psychological reality. TT bikes are built for predictability under duress, for confidence, for consistency in conditions where even a two degree temperature swing or a sudden gust of wind can change everything. It's not just about grip, it's about communication between rider and machine. And that communication is unspoken. It's felt through the bars, the seat, the pegs. When the front tire hums slightly differently or the rear steps out a touch sooner, a seasoned TT rider doesn't panic. They listen. The bike becomes an extension of the nervous system. There's a rhythm to it, almost like a language only understood at 180 miles per hour past a stone fence. And it's not just physical, it's mental alignment. The rider doesn't just ride the course, they remember it, sector by sector, lap by lap, sometimes even down to individual manhole covers. The trust goes both ways. The machine has to be consistent enough to reward that kind of memory. A flicker of unpredictability in the chassis or throttle response could be catastrophic. That's why every element, from throttle mapping to damping curves, is tuned for psychological stability as much as performance. Unlike MotoGP, where telemetrics guide every setup decision, TT machines are often dialed in through feel, feedback, and field experience. It's racing by instinct sharpened over thousands of hours. Even subtle changes in wind noise or helmet buffeting inform rider decisions on the fly. The mental load is immense. You're not just fighting speed. You're reading the road, reading the bike, reading yourself. And all that information has to be processed at a velocity where even hesitation can be fatal. So when the setup is right, it's not just mechanical, it's emotional. It feels like the bike is on your side, whispering through the noise. We've got this. Endurance demands and performance over time. In MotoGP, the intensity is relentless, but short-lived. Tracks are three to five miles long. Races run around 20 laps. Fatigue plays a role, but it's managed through repetition. The environment never changes much from lap one to lap 20. TT racing is the opposite. The course is nearly 38 miles per lap. 
and events like the Senior TT run for over six laps. That's a 200 plus mile race, solo, at terrifying speed. Fatigue isn't just a factor, it's a threat. So setups aren't just tuned for speed. They're tuned for endurance of both machine and rider. Overheating brakes, overcompressed suspension, fading grips, these become race-defining. Every bolt, cable, and damper has to survive not just time, but trauma. A MotoGP bike built for 45 minutes of glory would be gasping by lap three of a TT. It's not just about managing performance, it's about surviving the marathon. Tires wear unevenly on patched roads, brake fade can set in without warning, and even engine temperatures rise differently because airflow varies wildly throughout the course. Some parts of the TT route cut through forests where the wind dies down, while others open onto mountain passes where the chill can impact tire temperature in seconds. Riders must adjust constantly, mentally recalibrating their grip level, braking points, and line choices lap after lap. Even hydration and breathing patterns are part of the strategy. There's no pit board signaling every move. Riders rely on intuition built over years. Mechanical sympathy becomes a skill, knowing when to ease off the throttle, not because of lap time, but because the engine's telling you it needs a breath. Fuel consumption changes with elevation, rider weight, wind direction. That means the tuning isn't just done for lap speed, it's calculated for consistency over massive terrain. In that kind of race, mechanical fragility gets exposed brutally. Every vibration that MotoGP might filter out gets magnified on the mountain course. There's no escaping the toll. And for the rider, mental sharpness is everything. The TT doesn't just test speed. It tests how long a rider can dance with danger without blinking. Over time, the bike almost becomes a co-pilot, trusted but never fully tamed. Final thoughts. Two worlds, two philosophies. Trying to compare MotoGP bikes to TT machines directly is like comparing a jet fighter to a bush plane. Sure, the jet can go faster in perfect conditions, but drop it into a mountain canyon in a storm and suddenly the slower, more rugged plane wins. MotoGP bikes are built for precision, repeatability, and surgical execution. They are incredible machines, perhaps the most finely tuned racing bikes ever made. But the TT Superbikes are survivors. They thrive in a world of unpredictability. Their strength lies not in absolute numbers, but in how much of their performance they can extract when the world turns against them. At the TT, chaos is part of the landscape, and the machines that shine are those built not to dominate, but to adapt. That's why their mechanical setup looks nothing like MotoGP, because it can't. So while MotoGP machines are scalpel sharp, TT bikes are built more like sledgehammers. Refined, yes, but ready for war. Both are brilliant, both push boundaries, but they serve entirely different gods of speed. MotoGP races on the edge of perfection. TT races on the edge of reality, and that makes all the difference. If this breakdown hit the throttle on your curiosity, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with someone who loves the beautiful madness of motorsport. Drop a comment. What should be the next motorsport showdown breakdown? More insane comparisons and deep dives coming soon. Stay tuned.